Uh, so, who knows what OpenGL is? Or have you seen OpenGL written on like games you've seen or things like that? So, um, OpenGL um, is an abstract API for drawing graphics. What's weird about this API um, is that it's so abstract that you can kind of think of it as, as a spec that can, be, that can be implemented in hardware and or software. You can actually implement um, OpenGL in either or or, or both. Um, and so you have graphics cards basically that are, that are optimized, say, to work with OpenGL and to run all of the functions that, um, that OpenGL is, is supposed to run just right on the hardware with no software even having to interact with it. Um, obviously, there is software too. Um, so what's cool about OpenGL is that it is language and platform independent. And so you'll have the graphics card that's meant to work with, with OpenGL, and it'll have a language that it kind of works in, which is called, uh, I've written down somewhere, but it's like GLS, GLSL, which is uh, the shader language for, for OpenGL. Um, and, um, and so once you have... Once you have that, you can basically implement it in any language that you want. You can sort of bind OpenGL in different languages. And there are many different Im implementations of OpenGL. Uh, and yeah. So let's get to the web. So this guy, Vlad Vukasevic, I think is how you say, you, you say his name, um, talked about how one of the problems with OpenGL is that because it's so low level uh, and looks so strange when you expose it as an API, uh, it's hard to, um, to kind of work with it and it would be great to make an, an API on top of it that can make it work uh, in you know, ways that developers can actually handle. Um, so he actually would, would go on to implement the precursor to WebGL. Before there was WebGL, though, there were basically two games in town for doing 3D in a web browser. So Java and Adobe made their own um, wrapper language uh, virtual machines for, for OpenGL. Um, so basically, you download a plugin, uh, and that plugin would run the GL code that you would download from the web page. Um, neither became very popular. Um, I think Java OpenGL was like maybe 12 years ago or 10, 10, 10 years ago, and you probably haven't heard of it. Um, uh, they were, however, fairly secure because they did their own sandboxing and actually um, getting the, the browser to implement OpenGL while maintaining security was a pretty complicated thing to figure out, which Vlad Vukasevic kind of figured out. He figured out a few different, um, he, he basically figured out how to bring OpenGL to, to the web browser. So what he did was, building on OpenGL ES, which is uh, basically a version of OpenGL that's a bit stripped down, and I think originally was intended to work well with low power devices and mobile devices. Um, he um, wrote a JavaScript wrapper for it and used the canvas element uh, as just a thing on which to draw, you know, just pixels and had the, the OpenGL engine behind that, you know, figuring out what those pixels should be. Um, and here is an example of something that is rendered in Canvas 3D, and it looks amazing. This looks like a game that you might play on like an Xbox. Uh, and that's just running right in the browser. So Canvas 3D became WebGL. Um, and I'm sure probably everybody here at, at some point has seen some WebGL, or definitely seen it around here on pe people looking at it. Um, and yeah, it, it sort of turns your browser into a little like container for running anything. You can run Unity games in it. It just kind of uh, 
yeah, there's not really, the limit is how long you want to wait for your game to download over the, you know, over the internet. Um, so here are a couple of examples of like really complicated things that can be done with WebGL. I mean, the physics of, of this fluid, I'm sure Mike could tell us how like, insane those calculations are. And that's all happening real time. Uh, and yeah. So enter 3JS. So even though um, WebGL was a good tool for interacting with your GPU using JavaScript, still pretty hard to just write in, uh, just to write graphics with WebGL. And so 3JS is yet another layer of abstraction. So you have the, you know, the GPU slash OpenGL kind of working together. You have WebGL, which wraps that in JavaScript. And then you have 3JS, which basically wraps that in commonly used, um, uh, commonly used things that you might want to actually display instead of just arbitrary things that you might want to display. Um, so, um, yeah, so basically it lets you work very closely with the GPU on a very, very low level, but you're actually working at a very high level of abstraction. So that's pretty cool to get both. Um, so how do you use it? Um, here's, here's the basic idea. 3JS makes object 3D objects, which is a data structure that the creator of 3JS basically made up. Um, uh, it's basically a collection of um, coordinates that are bound to coordinates that the GPU can, can understand, um, and then connected to things like the lights and the textures and the other parts of, of your scenes. So basically, um, okay, this is kind of hard, okay, all right. So you have a scene ob object 3D. So it has a position and uh, it has all the properties of any object that you might want to render has. Um, you give that object child objects and actually any object in in 3JS can have child objects, which is kind of like the groups that, that Mike was showing you before, how you can have things that are that can move together. So the scene will have um, various meshes attached to it. A mesh is a combination of a geometry, which is a 3D uh, sort of shape, and a material, which is basically like a clothing to put over that shape, what it should actually look like, how it should present. Um, so we have the scene object, which contains meshes. We have a camera, which basically determines um, you know, what perspective the 2D image that we see should be seen from. And we have the renderer, which kind of makes all of this happen. Lights are optional. Um, and maybe I'll talk about that more if I have time, which I know I will not. Um, so let's look at, at some code and at some examples. And uh, these are really, really cool. Okay, so here's a super simple rotating cube. Um, in our 3JS here, um, this is just in some jQuery from the document loads. Uh, we make a new scene. There's a, a, a three object for that. Make a new camera. Again, there's a three object for that. And we give it some parameters about uh, kind of how, how big it should be and where it is. Um, we give the renderer, basically some boilerplate, uh, boilerplate that you'll want to be the same basically whenever you use it. Um, we can set up very, very simple shapes to get this nice axis and, and grid, which can be useful for demonstrations, um, which are then added to our scene. And this kind of reads like, like English. Um, it's pretty, pretty easy to kind of see what's, what's going on here. Um, we make a cube geometry, which is a box geometry in three, cube material. Again, there's a material object. And we combine them to make the mesh. Give it a position, x, y, z, tell to cast shadows, uh, and basically add it to, to the scene. Um, and that's, that's, kind of, that's, that's kind of it. There's a lot of extra little bits of stuff here that isn't super important. Um, like Paper.js also, we have this render loop. And the stuff that you put in here will happen 60 times a second. Um, 
So that's why we have this uh, smoothly rendered animation here. GUI controls is a nice little thing that Google made, which lets us very easily change what's happening in the GUI. Um, and yeah, I can change each of these things, and uh, the cube moves in different ways. So that's a super, super simple one. And I'll show you maybe, maybe two more. Um, just kind of cool things that you can do. Here's one that has lighting. And this is, this is pretty beautiful. Um, so again, these boxes are, are all just meshes. This sphere is also a mesh. There is a light source that is in the same position as the sphere. And all of these meshes, um, the renderer is calculating how each of these should, re sh uh, should react to light. And uh, given the position of the camera, what should actually be drawn on this canvas. Um, what's also cool about this is it can show us about ray casting. And I'll, I'll wrap up now. Um, which is uh, basically th there's this interesting problem of how do we click on things in a 3D scene. In Paper.js, it's not so hard. When you click on something, it kind of is where it looks like. In 3D, we can have things that are behind other things. So we have this thing called ray casting, where basically wherever I click, um, there is, you can picture like a, like a beam of light shooting out of the position in 2D space, say right here, going into the scene, and the renderer will, will actually figure out what face of this geometry is being hit. And then you can, say, have event listeners on that face or on that object that can then do things like this cool animation. Um, it's a really, really cool library. The source code is actually extremely well written and very easy to read. Um, the documentation is OK. The, tutor the like, tutorials and demonstrations like this are amazing, very, very easy to read. Um, and it's super cool. And you should all check it out. Thanks.